Father, we thank you for such a wonderful evening. We are that you speak your word mightily upon our heart. Help us to be transformed by your word. Energize us, build us up, impart us, set us on an accurate, more accurate coordinate so that we can be witnesses unto our generation. Give us faith in life, give us encounters. And at the end of this meeting, we vow that glory will be given unto your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's go with speak. Sustaining divine inheritances. Sustaining divine inheritances. I pray. Can you now pray? Tell God to give you an encounter tonight. An encounter of a lifetime. Something that will shift your life. For season. Something you've not received before. Ask God to give you an encounter. Give us an encounter tonight. Shift us, Father, by your spirit. Give us encounters in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's run. Colossians chapter number one from verse 12. Listen, the theme is sustaining divine inheritance. This is part one of the teaching series. Praise God, hallelujah. I want you to listen with rapt attention, pay much attention to the thing that the Holy Ghost can do within your life. There are some of you, as the message is going on, God can put prayer point on your heart. Let's know what stop you. There is something that is being seen under charismatic movement. That is lawlessness. Now, that is why sometimes Apostle Paul should come and tell us that God is a God of order, not confusion. Because when men begin to ascend in grace, there are many laws that they begin to break. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Our dear ladies, you are very much welcome. Sit down fast for us. Are you here with me? Pay attention to the things I'm saying. I am saying that in a charismatic environment, part of the things you find is called lawlessness. It doesn't mean they are lawless. But there are many traditions of men that charismatic people can go to be. That is why when grace comes upon a man, you want to break off from religion. Have you found out that a lot of people break off from the church just because an anointing came upon them? Sometimes they are not at default or they are not the ones at fault. I let your attention be here. You are not doing washing work. The washer is there to direct people to sit down. Why are you watching the fine miners is coming? Hallelujah. Amen. Let your attention be here. The Bible said that and we all with unveiled faces, as beholding in a glass, the glory of God are transformed. So for you to be transform actually you need to keep the consistent focus on the lord that is why nothing should distract your attention by the flesh so that you can gaze on him and as you gaze you become this is how we get transformed so the number of times satan helps you to get distracted by visiting your whatsapp by touching your phone is the inefficiency that will be seen in your transformation so most time we come under atmosphere where god is hosted so mightily not as if God is not in your churches. The word of God preaching, being preached is powerful. But the time that your word came, Satan told you to go on Instagram. And you took your phone. You, went, you didn't know what you went on Instagram to do. But when the message that will really cultivate your heart for God, that will bring your deliverance past, you now switch off your phone and you focus. You have missed your moment of encounter. May it not happen to anyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was saying, I said in a charismatic movement, it is likely possible that you may think that these people are lawless because they are not being governed by the laws of men. Part of the laws of men is called the laws of attention. Every man really naturally wants to gain attention. And you can see that law in high propensity ladies. Always they want to be seen, they want to be known. Yes, you must watch me. They must get attention. A lady who doesn't want to get attention is not a correct lady. <laughs> it is true. Why they spend a lot of a lot of time before mirror before they step out is just because of one thing attention. Sometimes there are lonely roads, but they will never choose that road. They want where people are there, especially when they are draped, so that when they pass, people can wait. Am I not lying? Am I lying? It is true. Even some of the guys, that is how we are. When you see people standing up in class to go and clean board, it is just because the addressing is nice. The day that the addressing is not nice. The teacher will give them the duster, they will give it back to him because they know that something is not well. So by nature, men really need attention. And when charisma, charismata, 
That is the plural form of grace comes upon a man. He begins to lose his environment. He now don't even think about what people are saying of him. That is what happened to David in 2 Samuel chapter number 6. The Bible says when they took the ark of God from Abinadab, eh, they brought it from Dibia into Jerusalem. David began to dance. And as he danced, he even forgot that he was a king. He went naked. Why? Because God was working within that man. And sometimes when you are under grace, these things begin to happen. You are checked, you look as you cry. The message is coming and the Holy Ghost is putting a prayer point on, on your heart. Sometimes you need to open your mouth and speak in tongues. Sometimes people stand up and they shout. I, I was telling the workers yesterday that I was in a service. Mighty service. Jesus was moving. Literally moving. And they said, the prophet said everybody should keep quiet because he is ascending. But me, I didn't hear that one. Jesus told me to shout so that I can be located. While well, everybody was quiet and the room was silent. That was when God said, you shout, or you miss your inheritance. So I began to shout manually, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The prophet might think that something is happening. No, I'm shouting manually. I was shouting by my own energy. That's because grace is speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know how God will direct you this evening. But when it feels like shouting, you are now. Yeah, that everything is supposed to be on, on order. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything is supposed to be what? In order. Colossians chapter number one. Verse 4. Araha vida hakaski braha vanti bigabaya. Giving thanks unto the, the Father. The Bible said, giving thanks unto the Father. Which has made us meet which has to, be made us meet to become partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Of the saints in light. Who are delivered us from the power death. of darkness. When God saved you, what he really made you, plus the many things that he gave you, is to bring you to a place where you can become meet, you can become qualified to assess the inheritance of every saint who is in light. So everybody who is a saint in light has an inheritance. And these are the things that you need to know so that you can learn how to sustain. Hallelujah. Amen. By reason of introduction, let me start this way, that by God, God has a kind of wisdom, an infinite wisdom. And this infinite wisdom and his fatherhood was expressed when he was creating, when he was creating things. What he did when he began creating is to create the ecosystem of a creator before he put the creator there. So before you came, the world had been prepared. Before the trees came, God had put any nutrient that the tree will need in the soil. That is how God created. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible said, read it for me. I want to go by scripture. I can put it off end, but maybe you rush through. Yes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 20. Hey? Genesis 1 20. The Bible said, And God said, Let, us, let the waters bring forth. And God abundantly. said, Let the waters. He has created the waters first, but there was no fish in the water because it is an expression of his infinite wisdom. What if he created fish before water? Where will fish live? You will now know that God can make mistakes. So when you begin to make mistakes, you know that we are men. Mistakes are not in the realm of God. And he called you into that realm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God created you after his image and his character. What he is expecting is that one day you write as exam and you score 100. And that will not be just a miracle. It will be how you live. That is how God created you. It's because... Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. I don't know what you want to believe in, but in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible said, God formed man in his image and in his likeness. We are created in the order of God. The past mark for us is the mark that God was called. And when he was scoring, he used wisdom to create. Maybe you will not understand what it means to create the fish, to create the water before the fish. That is an expression of wisdom. Most of us don't know our purpose, but we are run into relationship. This is not called wisdom. It will destroy your life and every part of your destiny will be distracted. You don't know what you are called to do. Yet, you have a partner. Your partner is confused. Yourself is confused. And the two of you are confused. Aha. That is how Satan comes in. So when you talk, when, when you are conversing, what will you talk about? You don't know purpose. You will talk about, what will you talk about? Even at that stage, you know that you don't have wisdom. Because wise men will wait until they see the oracles of God concerning their lives. And they will wait until God give them the partner that will help their destiny. That is how God ordered the system. It was when Adam began to work that God knew that it was no good that he stays alone. I will bring him a help meet in the work that he's supposed to do. 
the one that came to propose you don't know his purpose. The first question you ask him is that what has God told you that you become? He will tell you, I don't even know. Tell him that go and look for God because you are lawless. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? So that infinite wisdom, may God create the waters before the fish came. And that is the same way he created the, the soil before the plant came. So God knows that the life of the fish is within the water. So fish, it cannot depend, or fish cannot be independent of the waters. What I want to tell you is that we also came from God. And by the reason of that, our life is dependent on the life of God. Just because fish can never live outside the waters, whenever men begin to live outside God, they say that they have died. That is why in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24, when God told Adam to leave the garden, he didn't go back to God and say, I didn't die. Adam understood what transpired. God said, the day you eat of this tree, you will die. You will surely die. It is not a mistake way. The day that Adam ate, he didn't die. But you find him nowhere that Adam went back to God and said, oh God, I didn't die. What happened? Adam understood that death is not when this mortal life has been taken away. It is when the creator has been separated from his ecosystem. Whenever you take fish out of water, it can move a little, but it will die suddenly. That is the death in our language. So when Jesus wanted to bring us back to life, the Bible said he has reconciled us back to God. In Colossians chapter 1, the same chapter 1, verse 21, read verse 21 for me. Verse 21. Uh, and you the bible said and you that were sometimes that alienated. we were sometimes alienated and enemies in your and mind become enemies in our mind by wicked works by wicked works the yes, bible said now yes, we are now reconciled the reconciliation is fine it's an attempt to bring the creator back to the ecosystem where he can live that is how god designed our life to live that's why we tell you that without christ you are there it's not just because of any kind of death. God designed our life that we can never live outside this economy. The day that you begin to have less encounters with God, know that you have started dying. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how the life of men is being segregated. Are you here with me? Yes. I hope you understand what I'm trying to build on upon, upon something. So if you don't follow me and you begin to ascend, maybe you lose track. So pay attention and follow me in the name of Jesus. Are you here? Yes. Can we continue now? That is how he designed our life to be. When Adam now leave Eden, the children now ask him, how can we get back God? We want to live according to the life that God gives. How can we do it? So Adam learned the wisdom of the immortals. That wisdom of the wisdom of the authors. So he told these people how to build it. That is why in Genesis chapter number 4, you will learn that Abel, Cain and Abel brought sacrifices. The sacrifice was not just because they have abundance and they wanted to give. It was a technology trying to bring back the ecosystem that they lost. It was a way trying to just receive the same portal through which God can ascend and descend. That is how our lives can become. You know why we tell you to keep praying until God begins to manifest himself unto you? Because without those encounters, you are dead. The life of man is being graded in the encounter that they have. That is how God designed our life. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible said, And the voice of God came walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. Those things were the moment of life for Adam. That is how the life of Adam is being serviced. So we are not serviced by flesh and blood. We are not serviced by meat alone. <laughs> In my class, we know the ladies to be for the end. When we are talking about alcohol, they will never speak. The time you mention food, they will give you all the stuff that they have a sweet meal. Our, <laughs> our generation can be known of food. But Jesus said our life is not determined by bread alone. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible said, Man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus was trying to bring us back to the original template upon which the life of man was predicated. And that template is that you will live by the encounters of the spirit that you have. So God always visited Adam just because he wanted Adam to live. And the day that Adam left, they wanted to find another technology upon which they can use to contact God. And that technology was the way of authors. No wonder Abel died physically. Nevertheless, the Bible said his blood was speaking. Because anybody that can thank God, you don't die. That's why eternal life is not even, even on this earth. That's why Jesus said, don't fear the one that will kill this flesh, but cannot kill your soul. Because life indeed is the one that you know God. That is eternal life. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So all tests is the only way that man can thank God again. Jesus came, and when you read John chapter 1, verse 51, 
the Bible said that you, you just saw that I just gave you a word of knowledge. God was speaking to Nathaniel. But you shall see that the heavens are open and angels are descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. His life has become an altar. That is the same altar that Jacob had in Genesis chapter 28. Remember the Bible said when he was running from Isaac, then because he so wanted to kill him, he came to a place that he took a stone, he put his head upon and he had a dream. The heaven had opened and there was a ladder. Upon the ladder was God standing and angels ascending and descending. Jesus said men can also become. So when he comes into your life, it is not enough that he gave you eternal life. He wanted, he wanted to make a portal out of your life. And that portal is what will bring God down. So a prayerless generation is not a generation that cannot even live. It's a dead generation. Even if you have life, you will lose your life. Because how our life is being served in the encounters that we have. So encounters cannot be underemphasized. It is not something we can undermine. If you become a church girl for 20 years, for 15 years, without having series of encounters, you will lose your salvation. In this time, Satan is very vigorously trying to deceive even the elect. And the only way we can stand strong is when we have known our God. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible said that, and they that know their God, they shall be strong. This is the end season. And in this end season, without genuine encounters with God, you can never stand. That is what it means to build an altar. So he wants you to start praying. He gave you laws. Just pray one hour a day. And it is not even about accessing things. You begin to pray for money. Money won't come. But God will say, keep praying. It is not really about giving you money. He wants to build an altar through your life, through consistency. An altar is built by reason of consistency. So you know in your families, we have demonic altars. Demonic altars are not built over once. They have a stone there, they cut blood upon it. And they did it consistently until a demon came to sit there. That is when a demonic portal has been opened. So even when you want to marry, a demon has been assigned to your destiny. By the reason of that altar that exists. These things are not casual. They exist in families, they exist everywhere. By the reason of the consistent blood sharing, they created a portal through which demons can invade the family. And if you don't stand also to become an altar, to fight against another altar, you will pray for deliverance, but you will see nothing. So when you begin the work of intercession, God does not begin to answer your questions. He wants to create a portal in your life. And that portal will allow the ascension and dissension of God. That is how our life will be service. It is in those encounters that we know we live. The day that Adam left, he knew that he has died. Because his life can never be service again. He has lost those encounters of the spirit. Where are you now? Always I ask that question. Where are you? Most of us are not interested in paying the price in order to host God. Most of us are not paying the price in order to have series of encounters. You don't know that God builds upon encounter. He knows that the encounter, the first encounter every born again believer had is the encounter of salvation. That is the first encounter. The day that you gave your life to Jesus was the very day that you had the first encounter with God. But he knows that encounter is not enough to keep you standing. That is why a lot give their life to Jesus. Within three months, they go back to where they were. A lot receive deliverances. Within few days, they go back. Because one encounter is not enough to establish you on a path of faith. God builds upon encounter. So when he appeared to Isaac, he said that because your father Abraham obeyed me. In Genesis chapter 26 verse 5, he said because your father obeyed me. So he came with the encounter of Abraham. When he appeared with Jacob, he said that I am the God of your father Abraham. I am the God of your father Isaac and I will also be your God. It is in the reason and in the strength of those encounters that God descends on men. Encounter is important. And God builds upon encounter. It is true that he showed you fragment of himself. What have you also known? Satan can also metamorphose to show you the same thing that God showed two years ago. And if you have not really metamorphosed to become another dimension of yourself by the reason of the encounters of the spirit, you will be deceived. Satan can mimic everything and even mimic the voice of God. That's why sometimes you hear voices and you say, which one is the voice of God? That's why sometimes you doubt if God is speaking to you because Satan can mimic everything of God. But the only way he cannot steal you is by the reason of you have been known him. You have known him so much that it doesn't matter what Satan does. That experience can never be dejected from your life. God builds upon encounters. It is true you prayed last week and there was an energy prayer that you had. A prayer energy you had to pray and you were able to go for four hours. That is not enough. You realize that after two weeks, even one hour became strong. After for a few days, even praying 13 minutes became a burden. You just had one encounter in a church service and you realize that you were no, no longer interested in fornicating. You're no longer interested in social media. But a few days after, 
you were you became a god on social media. Some of us can spend as much as six hours, eight hours a day on phone. There were days where fire, the fire of God came so mightily upon you that every desire of the flesh was being quiet. But then because you were not able to sustain that encounter, you went back again because God builds upon encounters. It is within that encounter that our life is being saved. So Paul was a wise man. He said that I have not apprehended. I cast away everything I know and I press on so that I can know deeper. That man was a serious man. He met God face to face, but he said that I may know him. What else do you want to know? He saw the form of God. He saw life. That spoke of it. God baptized him with fire. Everything was available to Paul. He saw mighty things that God did. Nevertheless, he said, that time. You know him. So a life without encounters, you know that you will die one day. A life without encounters is a life that will be great one day. Your desire of the spirit must be service daily in the presence of God. So it is not a place that we will go there once a month. It is important that you pray four hours, but it is equally important that you maintain a consistent prayer life. That is how altars have been built. The idea of BLM prayers at 2 a.m. is not just for answers for prayers. It's to create a portal through which the inheritances of God can be trapped for a generation. That is why even if no one will join, men must pray. And because it is not men gradient, it is dependent on the energy of the spirit we can communicate in some years to come. That is our focus. And if your focus is just to create a point that through which God can enter and come out, then you will not miss it again. You will not miss your moment of encounter. You will not say you have studied and you are tired because of that you will not pray. Some of you, you know how to enter into the realm of God. It is by reason of songs. And always God wants you to worship him for 30 minutes. And whenever you are able to fulfill that, you say the all of God. For my own, I have realized that the day that I have encountered are the days I pray for about six hours. I don't joke with that prayers. I go there almost every week so that my life can be serviced. That is how we live. Say that is how we live. That is how and we the live. day that you continue to mess, you know that you have started on the path of death. And in that encounter, what God brings is called inheritances. This is where my message is found from. Have you ever gone to any fights and maybe somebody was married in your house? And the rich people came. And when one uncle who is rich spoke to you, you were expecting that they give you money. Has it have ever happened to you? Yes. That a rich auntie came in the house and suddenly you went to dress and you were looking nice. And you came to just walk around them. You became most obedient child that day. Just because you know that rich auntie will never leave me the same. Has it happened to you? To those of you that maybe you had the opportunity that your friend visited you whilst you were in essence. You know how visitation days are. Your life can change the whole day. Maybe you are not even in good terms with your mother, but visitation time, you go and hug It's not there because of anything. That is another experience altogether. Yeah, I didn't have opportunity. My mother was 247. My father too won't come. The day that my father visited me, he was going for a court case. He was at, he was, he used to work at Marseille High Court. And he passed by to say hello. And when I expected anything, he gave me ten and it was once in my life. The day that mommy came, but just because she had a contract with the matron of our school, and she came and brought me the love. True. But that day I was the boss in school because mommy has come to give me the love. That is how most times encounters with God are. There is nothing that God ever does, or there is no place that He came without inheritances. In Acts chapter number 14, when you read verse 17, the Bible said he leaves himself without a witness. He leaves not himself without a witness. Whenever God comes, he wants to give you a witness so that you know that he came. These are the inheritances that he brings. Sometimes you are sick until you come to the presence of God, but you realize that sickness will get turned out of yourself. Sometimes your character can be very bad. You are suffering with a whole lot of things, infirmities, until you meet power. And the day that you met the power of God was the day that it left. You know what God brought? He brought an antidote to your issue. That is how God is. But most of the time when we come, we don't even expect. If I should ask you, how many of you have expectation for this? And you will be shocked that some of us just came there because I have to come. I am just a worker. So we are saying, we say we, we are going for BLM. And I came. But when you meet the rich auntie who is sitting in the flesh, you expect to receive. How much more you come to the father of all grace? 
Jesus said that you, that you are evil. You know how to give good things unto your children. How much more your father who is merciful. But most time we come to meet God without expectation. That is why we can't even meet him at the first place. Your God has inheritances. Whenever you come before his presence, there are things that he gives unto us. There are things that we can never get outside. Our lives is being saved by the reason of those encounters. And the Bible said in Isaiah chapter number 40 from verse 28, Had thou not known, have thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the world, he fainted not, neither does he become weary. The Bible said he giveth power to them that have fainted, and to them that have no mind, he increased their strength. That is what God does whenever we encounter him. You can go to God as a secular, and he will give you strength so that you don't fall sick again. This is what it means that your life will be serviced by the presence of God and the encounters of the spirit that you receive. That's what the Bible said in James chapter 1 verse 5. If you lack wisdom, come to God. He will give you without reprimanding you. He give a liberality unto women. That is how God designed himself because he is a father of us. But most time we come before him even as daughters and sons and we expect to receive nothing. Even when you are praying that God will deliver you, you expect that you go back with the sickness. And you want to go and tell man of God that man of God has been praying over the issue. But the whole prayer point that you prayed with to us without an expectation to receive anything of the Father. That is why we don't receive inheritances. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? Yes. So your Father in heaven gave inheritances whenever we encounter him. May, may you now pray that Father in this atmosphere, in this service, anything that you have for me, may I, my hands see, may my hands handle in the name of Jesus. Pray that one prayer point. Pray that one prayer point. Break that one prayer point in the name of Jesus. So no one really needs God and go back the same way. That's why in Ephesians chapter number one, from verse one to three, can someone read for me? Ephesians chapter one, verse one to three. The Bible said what? Paul. The Bible said, Paul, an, an apostle, apostle of, of the Lord, right. by, by the will of God, uh -huh. to the same which are in Ephesians. And I wrote this to the same which are in Ephesians. And to the faithful, and to the faithful in, Christ faithful in Christ Jesus. And he said, Grace, Grace be, be unto you. And peace from and God. Peace from God. Our Father. Our Father. And from our Lord Jesus Christ. And listen to what he said in verse 3. Uh -huh. Blessed be the God and Father. Blessed be the God Christ. and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed, who has blessed, blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. Not that he is coming to bless us. Last week I was telling those people that they came that the mistake of our generation is that we write the Bible for God. When God is saying the past tense, we make it future tense. God said, by his stripes you are healed. Some people read and say, by his stripes I will be healed. That is why you can be sick, you can pray and receive no healing. Because within your subconscious mind, you have made up your mind that healing cannot be now. Sometimes people really can even heal and they don't believe that the healing that they are healing people can really heal them. There are men that they believe that they are vessels, that they cannot enjoy of the fruit thereof. Have you ever prayed for somebody to receive healing and you were sick and you didn't even pray for yourself? Has it ever happened to you? You didn't even think of praying for yourself so that the same virtue that you release can be upon you. It's just because we don't know that God has really blessed us already. That is the mistake of our generation. So the Bible said there is something that God did unto us and what he did is called blessing. He blessed us and the blessing that we have, they are in heavenly places. The blessings are not carnal, they are not earthly. If it is earthly and it gets finished, we know that it has finished. Whenever anything that is in heaven means it's eternal. So anything that you run lost, you can go back to God and ask for it. That is why restoration is possible in this kingdom. He can give you inheritances and you can even miss it by reason of your carelessness. Nevertheless, when you come back to God, there is still abundance for you. I'm not saying that be careless about the things you receive of God. But even when you lose them, you know that as long as they are localized in heaven, there is a power to bring back those things that you've lost. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the mystery behind restoration. It's because we know heaven never runs dry. You know the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 that Jesus fed 5,000 men and even the glutons were filled. The Bible said, <laughs> they said Jesus was a gluton. If Jesus was a gluton, what about the disciples? They were even more than gluton. He fed 5,000 men throughout their families. Even the glutons among them were filled. Nevertheless, they ate and they now were now casting it away. Heaven never ran by. Then because Jesus prayed over their face. It was multiplied. Jesus said, gather. And they gathered and gathered. And they got to one basket. What is that, that that you are seeking that you think heaven cannot be? If only you heard that it is localized in heaven. And God is the giver of them. Then you know that it can never run dry. Sometimes when you need results in life, it's not just because you don't study. You study. 
but your studies is without knowledge. <laughs> Results, in, you know, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, that God gave Sarah strength. Sarah, through faith, received strength that she may conceive. So, conception was possible then that her womb had no strength. It was not as if nothing was happening. There was strength that must be added so that results can be produced. Most of them, that is what God does to us. He gives us strength so that we can take over our world. He gives us strength so that we can fulfill the demand that is upon us. He gives us strength so that we can chew our books and study. I know what I'm talking about by experience. Not as if I am just talking about them because I've learned. I've walked through them and I know what it means to God to give you strength so that results can pursue you. That is what he did unto Sarah. And anybody that came to God and said, Father, help me, he never denied them of help. It's just because we have never asked for help. And if you don't ask for help, you will suffer till you die. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are happy legend, and I'll give you rest. If you see yourself under stress and loss and, and pressure, it's just because you have never come to Jesus. It's just because you have never encountered him. He told you that only if you came, I can take away the stress and the pressure. I will take away the heavy load so that your life can be lighter, can be less, less heavy. So most times people walk under this, this wall, even though they are Christian, they will hold demons within them. They will suffer with addiction. They will walk around with sicknesses and never can, nothing can happen. Then because they have never come to God that is able to take away these things. May you encounter him in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is who our God is. He gives liberally. The inheritances are always given. They are always available. Not as if God is now going to create. Before you came into the earth, he has created your ecosystem. And he knew how you will find symbol in earth. That's why he said that I know the thought I have concerning you. Thought of peace to give you an expected end. He didn't just begin your destiny. He finished your destiny before you came. So anything and everything that we need to propagate destiny and to become prosperous, God has procured it already. Hallelujah. Amen. He finished it before I came into time. Jesus died before even the world began. These things were hidden. No one knew. Until Paul came, he journeyed deep within God. And he found out that the mystery of our glory was hid within God before the foundations of the earth. And it happened that even Satan didn't have access code to the mysteries of God. So the thing concerning your life is not as if God is now going to create. God knows that at this point you need money. And it's not now that he's going to create your own currency for you. They are stored in heaven. The only thing you have to do is know how to access the inheritances of the spirit. God knows that you are supposed to be a prophet by now. And the eyes to prophesy have been given. Before John the Baptist came, he said that he will walk in the power and the spirit of Elias. The strategy was given. Nothing was supposed to be an issue for John the Baptist. Because God has already said that this guy will walk in the spirit and in the power. Let me tell you, I know my order. When I started out in ministry, I didn't go confused. I've never asked for any man how to do ministry. It's not just because I'm proud. It's because I know these things before even I started. I went back to God to ask him, the Father, before you brought me here, you have created the ecosystem. Who are the men I must work with? Even before I knew I would do ministry, I had the people to start with. Hallelujah. I don't know why you have gotten to that. You think God has given up. Maybe you are begging and you cry just because you don't know what he has told. He has already said I have an expected end, not an expected beginning. The whole issue is I want to paint God by his correct image. Most people think that God is a wicked God. Because if people ask the question, if God is alive, why is it that people are hungry? Why that there are wars? Have you ever asked that question before? So even before you start praying, you know that this God that I'm going, I don't know what he looks like. Whether he's a raster man or he's dead. <laughs> Most people think that God wants to kill them. That is why when they sin, they cannot approach God boldly to ask for forgiveness. They know that God is pursuing them with a cutlass just to kill them. People think that God has created hell or fire for them. So the day that they sin, Satan will tell you that God has gotten you. He will kill you now. But your father in heaven is waiting that you come back so that he can receive you with embracement. What did the Bible say? There was this prodigal son that went and harassed the father to take away his possessions. When he was coming back, he said that I want just to become to become a servant. But the father was waiting to give him a kiss, to give him a ring, and to give him an inheritance again. That is how your heavenly father is. There is nothing that you lost that is really being lost. They are being saved in heaven for you. And the day that you are able to turn back in faith unto God, you know that he is most loving father that you have ever met. These inheritances were procured before you came to time. Hallelujah. 
He knows the expected end and he knows every journey, every bit of the journey that you must take. And he has really orchestrated everything, everything. That's why the Bible said that God made everything beautiful in his own time. Not as if he was confused. He is a master creator. That's why I choose to choose him more than trusting myself. I found out so much of God that and I said that Father, I detect my own will. I detect anything I can do. I refuse to live according to my preference. And the time came that if God does not speak, I'm not moving. A time came I had to really fight my earthly father. Then because I know what God, I thought I know what God wanted me to do. And he wanted to dislocate me from destiny. I was bold to tell him that you, you want to really dislocate me from a place of destiny. It's because of my level of trust that I have for God. Why? Because I know that this father has inheritances from my life. And these inheritances are stored in the heavenly places. Most times our mistake, the mistake of this generation are three. Number one, we are ignorant of them. Number two, we don't know how to assess. And number three, we don't know how to sustain them. How many of you have received healing? And two days after, he came back again. Sickness came up. How many of you received impartation? Some few days. It looked as if your heaven is open. But just one week afterwards, you came back to even head is not even earth. <laughs> it looked as if God loves you most. How many of you received impartation? The money was flowing in your account. Until after two days, you were poor and you were even doubting if what you received was true. We pray for you, we lay hands upon you, and truly, truly, by the integrity of God, He brings inheritances. But our mistake is that it's either we are ignorant that we receive, we are ignorant, and then you are ignorant, you are even disqualified. Or number two, we can't sustain them. We don't know how to access these things that are in the heavenly places, and we can't sustain. That is why God guarded us, because in this generation, He will release a lot. Ah, you are not here. This is a generation of inheritance. Glory cannot be created by man. It is only God that rises upon people and He gives them power so that they can manifest His glory. When He said this is a, a generation of glory, it is just a declaration of how much He will make within your life. It's not even about being a lady. When the power comes upon you, know that the face of man can really become faces of men. You know that the harlot of Samaria can become a prophetess. You know that weak men can become strong. What did the Bible say? Through faith, men that were weak, they became strong. Through faith, men subdued kingdom. They had no opportunity to stand before kings. But these people have so much power to confirm kingdom. Why? Because God did something to them. That is what he is going to do. He's going to release inheritances. Something that you never thought of will happen to you. Something, an encounter that you never dreamed of will happen. Power that you never thought that you ever have will just come upon you and it will swallow you up. But if you are ignorant of them, you don't know how to sustain, oh, you are disqualified. You will lose your relevance in this generation. In our generation, our relevance is tied to the grace that is at work within our life. First Peter, chapter number four. Read from verse 7 to 11 for me. First Peter, chapter number four. Uh -huh. Verse 7 to 11. Uh -huh. But Listen, the end of the Bible said, but the end of all things is at of hand. All things is at hand. But yeah, there be therefore sober. And be therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. And watch unto prayer. The Bible so the happen. Bible said the apostles is recommending prayer in this end time. Said the end of all things is at hand. The end of the world is at hand. The rising of the generation is at hand. Prayer is not something that must be compulsory. Prayer is a necessity if you must live. <laughs> Why we pray is not just because we want to force ourselves into God. This is how we live. The apostles, you know the mightiest apostle that ever rose was Peter. He had so much power, he communicated with so much power. None of the apostles, the disciples could know him. But this guy was walking around without even his notice. Sick people were just being healed just because his shadow was casted upon them. He communicated with so much power until he got to the last level, which is called Kratos. Power personified. That is when he knew that that one is just for God alone. And this man is just recommending that in these last days, you don't need Facebook to live. You don't need your wisdom to survive. You need prayer. The end of all days is now. Therefore, be sober, be vigilant. Open your eyes. If you, <laughs> if you are myopic, you will die in this season. Go for Google and make sure that your eyes see clearly. Be sober and watch on to prayer. That is how you survive. Hallelujah. Amen. The generation, oh, it pains me. Now, when you call for prayer meeting, people won't come. And they think they are wise. No, Satan is killing you small, small. 
<laughs> when you live with a wicked wife and she doesn't want you to die early so that the police can capture her, they poison you small, small. Just because Satan don't want you to catch him or you run to go and look for God, he will poison you small, small. He will, he will decrease your prayer energy. You were praying one hour and now we are writing as I'm going to make it 30 minutes. And one week you pray for 30 minutes after that you realize that you can't even go for one away again. Another thing will happen. Let me make it 15 minutes. After some time, you will be sleeping. You, you will not even wake up. Has it happened to you that you were on fire for one week and the other week you slept through? Sometimes you wake up and you are shy. Oh, is this me? <laughs> it is not you say that is killing you small, small. What on to prayer? That is what the apostles are recommending when the days are bad. So if you can't pray, you stand at vulnerable, you become vulnerable to anything that Satan can throw. Even when he is brushing his teeth, you will fall a victim. <laughs> Even when he is away from anything that the kingdom of enemy, the kingdom of darkness begins to throw, it is only men that don't have stamina that they will fall. Some of us, he needs to shake things, he needs to make things become hard before we begin, we begin to pray. The whispers of the enemy cannot even enter our ecosystem because we are fortified by the reason of the prayer that we raise. But if you don't know how to pray, you are already defeated. What on to prayer? That is the recommendation of the apostles. And here continue. And above all things. And the Bible said, above all things. Have fervent charity. Have fervent ta- charity. Like, amongst yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. The Bible said, charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality to one another without grudging. And here continue. As every man has received a gift. Listen. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to even another. Even so minister your gift unto one another. As good stewards of the as money for the grace of, of the God. Money for. When you come to the service, when you come to places of encounter, every kind of grace must be available. In this end time, we minister our gift in order to become relevant. You will see why I won't work with you again because your life is without purpose. There is nothing I can derive out of you. Men are running after inheritances and graces so that they can become relevant in this generation. There is nothing you carry. There is nothing that can come out of your life. Yet you want to walk with the big guys. No, it is a lie. The big guys in our realm are not those with cars. They are those that they can command the hand of God. And until you also acclimatize to that level, it will be impossible for me to walk with you. This is how we sustain our relevant. Minister to one another with the gift that everybody has received. So if you are ignorant of your gift, you are defeated. If you don't know how to minister your gift, you are defeated. Most of us can receive inheritances, come for prophetic service, and eagle our laws. God is giving power to prophesy. And you see people falling down. They don't even know how to even prophesy. They <laughs> Sometimes by mistake, your dreams begin to open. And you have dreams and you're able to interpret it well. But after one week, you realize that you don't even dream again. We can't sustain the energy. We can't sustain the inheritances. That is the mistake of our generation. And many will be defeated. Because in these last days, God is going to give a lot of inheritances. When you read First Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 7, the Bible said the manifestation of the gift will give it to everyone for profiting with all, for the profit of everybody. My relevance is tied to my gift. I can never be relevant to you there because I'm a student. My relevance is, is to you is there because I am a custodian of the mysteries. One way or in one way or the other, I also need somebody to cause a healing maybe one day. And I will just call upon your name because that is how we will survive in these last days. There must be men that can multiply food so that we don't need to go and buy. Even when Satan said that we see the mark of the beast before you buy, we will even cast him out because there are people that can multiply. The only thing you need to do is to pass by my house and I will give you food for free. I don't buy, I multiply them. That is how we sustain our relevance in this season. We will not buy drugs again because men become pharmacists. And what if you don't know the gift that you carry? What if you don't know the inheritance of the street that you carry? You are defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here with me? Yes. I didn't call you here to just beat you with words. But God is helping us. That is the, that is the theme of the message. Sustaining the inheritances of God. Can you lift your voice one moment? Uh, Father, let me touch an inheritance. When I was preparing, he said that this time, 
I will release an inheritance. And as many that will be willing to receive of God, as you even pray, He drops it upon you. It's not about shouting, it's about what God wants to do. As many that want to receive the prophetic, as many that an apostolic grace must be given, as many that must become exalted, as many that God must raise a kingdom finance out of you, as many that God must let you become carrier of his presence, even as you pray, he drops it. That is what he told me. Said in this service, I'm going to release inheritance, and it is at this moment of the spirit that he released. Baruska di Natali e Kavata Sania Tabalaka Tataka Sabra Havine e Broska di Nadabanta de Bai Panida Belaka Broska Bena Baba. You are so seated. Can you be on your feet and lift a voice and pray the Father? Let there be an inheritance tonight as I leave. Baros Havini Abanta de Malika Braske. If you don't have, how can you sustain? If there is no fire, what do you sustain? There is nothing to sustain if you don't possess. But in this generation, men are going to possess the dimensions of God. There are dimensions of the spirit that will be released upon men. And even as you pray, he drops them. From now, you just walk out of this place and you see the change in your spirit. You see the energy that you have acclimatized to. Lift a voice and let me hear you pray. Lift a voice and pray. I can hear you. Lift a voice. Are you focusing somebody? Your father has inheritance in any encounter. As many that are waiting for encounters. This is the moment of inheritance. This is the moment we are sent. It's by prayer that we are sent to receive. Little boys. You see, the strongest grace that people will receive is the prophetic. Because the prophetic brings direction. The Lord must become like parents. And they must bring direction to the generation. And that is what God is doing now. A lot must become like bearers. God must open eyes and ears so that people can lead men out of darkness. And Father, I ask that the prophetic will be activated. <laughs> As you lift the voice with expectation, you receive. Is Sadi Heko Brahavati Ibroski? Amina Dabante Bella Dabroski. Amina Dabroski Bada Baha. Sadi Broska Bella Dabha. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat and let's continue. We will pray after this service. Now let me teach you how to access these inheritances. When you begin to know that in any encounter God gives inheritances, you must also know the formation that brings these inheritances down. Or there are protocols for encounters. If you want to access wisdom, there is how you go by it. If you want to access mercy, there is how you go by it. But I want to give the general rule or the general formation for receiving in this kingdom. Praise God, hallelujah. Number one, some inheritances are rewards for individuals who are diligent and who are seekers. Never forget what I'm saying. Uh -huh. There are no free meals in this world. There are places where God encounters us when we are in the corporate meeting. But when men must really become leaders in the move of God, you must learn how to ascend alone. In Psalm 24, let's read it. Psalm 24. From verse 3 to 5. From verse 3 to 5. Who shall ascend the Bible into the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in and who shall stand? Remember, not rich people. He is talking about singular people that will have the ability to ascend to the hill of God. And who shall stand in his holy place? 
And the Bible said, uh -huh, He that has clean hands. He that that clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure hands. Who has not entered his the soul? The Bible said they have vanity. not given their soul into vanity. Nor sworn deceitfully. Nor sworn deceitfully. That's why right. he shall receive the blessings from the Lord. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord. The These things Paul. are rewards for men that can ascend. Blessings of personal sacrifices cannot be undermined because God makes men, not in groups. There is something that the group meeting can really do. But where people receive individual blessing is the place where we can all ascend. You know the Bible said that John go to heaven. There were things that were being told of him, but they want him not to speak it among men. Because these things are for them that can only ascend to the height. You know that Isaiah was part of a ministry on ground until he got to heaven. He ascended to a place when he saw the seraphims and God. He said that who want me? I'm a man of uncleanness and I dwell among men of uncleanness. All the priests that time were unclean. But it took only Isaiah when he was able to ascend to see God. When he was there, the Bible said in verse 8, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, that God said that whom shall we send and who shall go for us? That guy received a special ordination, not just because he was part of a priestly group, but because he was able to consecrate his life so that he can ascend. Hallelujah. Amen. This is where personal race is important. When Paul was about to die, he said, I have finished the race. No, we have finished. Paul was on journey with Barnabas and Timothy. There were days he went with Silas. But when he was about to finish, he said, I have finished the race. That guy was in the group. Nevertheless, these races are run individually. There are graces that can never be caught by the corporate group. There are graces that men must sustain the energy to ascend in order to handle. Solomon, Songs of Solomon chapter 4. The Bible said that thy neck is thy the tower of David. Upon that tower hang the souls of many and mighty men. But who can ascend? upon that tower of David so that the souls of these mighty men can come down. Men must ascend so that they can rear the shells. Azuma, I get there and I got the shield of Eliezer, the son of Dudu. Azuma, I ascend there and I come down with the mantle of Elijah. That is what happened to Elijah and Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter number 2, when you read from verse 1, they went to Bethel, they told him that your master will be taken away from you today. And he said that, I know, keep that thing. They moved from Bethel and went to Jericho. He had the same thing. The sons of the prophet, when they moved from Jericho to Jordan, they all waited. The Bible said 50 men went behind. But that guy wanted something. He pursued Elijah. Elijah said, wait behind. He said that, as long as God lives and your soul lives, I will never leave you. That guy was serious. He talked to his master. The master said, get back. He said, no, I must get what you carry before you are being taken away. These are the personal journeys so that we can receive. Until you personally journey beyond Jordan, you can never receive the mantle of Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be among the song yet become weak. There is a place where iron is happening iron. But when I see that you take from me too much more than did it, I will run away from you. <laughs> this is why we pray and we fast individually. This is why even the general fasting for the for the church cannot even benefit us because we have different hunger. There are different things that we are aiming at. There are different things that are going on in our spirit. And the protocol of engagement for our lives are different. And it's only when you are satisfied to journey beyond even the congregation to come to places where so men can dwell in solitude. That is when God really reveals himself unto you. If you must be Elijah to receive ordination, you must journey beyond men. Go to Mount Horeb. That is where God is waiting for you. Most of us don't know how to pay sacrifices to go deeper. And you think that by the reason of impartation, you can become you are a liar. The day that are coming, man must journey to places where they can handle the inheritances. You must come to where we cook it. Still, we cook it. We cook it. This is why he makes us. For David, it was called Cave Abdullah. That guy went there alone, but he didn't come back alone. That is what God makes out of our life whenever we are sent. We can go there alone, but whenever we are coming down, we come with blessings. You can start a prayer marathon alone. No one knows that even if you are praying, that you are praying. But after some time, your eyes begin to see. That is when they know that what you started had bare fruit. That is how we know men. The Bible said that in the last days, you know no man after the flesh. So if we know you by your name, you are failed. If you can say, my name is Bernard, I have failed. You must call me by my grace. That is your name, please. Erica. 
If maybe after two years we still call you Eric, it is failure. We know you by the flesh. They can say that the son of so so and so. What is your father's name? Jose. Jose. When we say the daughter of Jose, Erica, you have failed. You have not maximized God because we are supposed to know no man after that. Hallelujah. That is what it means to take you to places where we can receive inheritance. So if you begin to boycott the instructions of the Spirit that He gives you, know that you are shortcutting your process. Know that you are just eliminating yourself from the people that will become irrelevant in this generation. There is nothing that Holy God tells you that you can do. Even the general check praise and fasting, you don't even partake. Then you want your face to change. You want testimonies to evolve. You are a liar. There are places that we journey alone. Jesus Christ walked with 5,000, walked with a lot of people. But the cross, he must carry it alone. He must die upon the cross alone. Because he died, he, is all, he, he also resurrected and he was exalted alone. Peter said, we will stand with you. Jesus looked at him and said, you, before the cock crows, you have deserted me. Truly, truly, all of them ran away, except Peter alone. And that guy also ran in the morning. Are you here with me? That guy must die alone. There are places we can't journey with men. You are always surrounded with friends. You wake up with friends. You do everything with friends. You can never receive some inheritances of the Spirit. Because some of them you must stay alone until you see God coming. The Bible said that Abraham was separated from the whole family. As he sat down at Mamre, he under the tree. That was when he saw three men coming that looked like God. Your greatest place of discernment is when you are in solitude. But most times, you are distracted. That is why I don't like staying with people in the room. Because there are inheritances I must receive alone. There are encounters that will never come when you are not alone. Hallelujah. You know the Bible said that when angels began to minister to Jesus, number one, it was when he was alone in the wilderness. Number two, it was when he was alone in Gethsemane. All those guys who were asleep when Jesus was alone, that was when angelic activities were all going. So if only he surrounded himself always with men, these things he would have missed it. So Jesus was a wise man. You know that he separated himself from the people. He entered into the mountain to go and pray. But now we can't separate ourselves from phone. You can pray two minutes, you check your phone. Two minutes, you want to go online. You want to check what is happening. Not as if <laughs> you can pray and you think that the Holy Ghost says someone has given me a message. Then you switch on your phone. You want to go and check. It is a lie. It is your last that is giving you information. And whenever you are being led by that kind of corporate mentality, you can never see some dimensions of God. Some of them, you must journey alone. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody, some of them, you must journey alone. It is good that you work with friends, but there will be some days you need to separate yourself so that you can think for God. So that you can think about God and you can pray on your own. It is good that you enjoy corporate prayer so that your energy can be boosted. But you must make sure that you sustain the same level of energy when no one is praying with you. It is good that you pray with your for Sunday with songs playing. But you must also come to a point where you can journey alone with the energy of the spirit that you derived. Whenever your energy is a stunner, you are weak. You must have so much energy within you that you can journey alone. This is how encounters are possible and those encounters that are possible are those that bring men to places where they are being made. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's close. The second formation, as you know, is the formation that comes by a corporate group. There are some dimensions of God that you can never know when you're alone too. This, are, this is the balance. Some of you, some people say that I am a Christian and I won't go to the alliance, they are sinners. <laughs> Anybody that will say that Christianity is by heart is a liar. The Bible said that behold, all things have become new. All things behold. So if your Christianity cannot be seen, what are you doing? If you come to Christ, everything is new. And the Bible says, behold, they have become new. Meaning that whenever we look upon you, we must see the changes that Christ has made within your heart. And these changes are most times possible when we come in a corporate meeting. That is when you hear that people can live right and you think that you, you must, you have a weakness of lying. Lying is not a weakness, it is a sin. When you come and you hear that people never lie, you'll be boosted, you say, what are they doing? The special thing that they have is called the Holy Spirit and that's the same thing you have. 
But whenever you stay alone, you think that you are the most righteous. Self righteousness steps in, and God can never help you. Let's read Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Psalm 133. Sorry. From verse 1 to 3. From Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. Behold, behold, how good and the Bible pleasant said, how good and pleasant is it for bearing to dwell together, to dwell in together in unity. It is like precious oil. It is like precious oil upon the head. That is upon the head. That ran down the beard. And it ran down the beard. Even if Aaron's this beard. is the inheritance that we receive when we come together. Always, it's like oil, and everybody that become a partaker of a corporate meeting become a partaker of that ointment. By all means, you go back with the fragrance upon you. That is why it is important that we gather in groups. Never miss group praying. It is important that you have a personal schedule where you encounter God. But there is a multiplication effect whenever we come together. There are many things you can never do on your personal account. You need men to pray together with you. Read on. Uh -huh. That went down the skirt. That went Hermon, down the skirt. At the dew of Hermon. The Bible said it is like the dew of Hermon. As the dew that descended and upon the mountains the of Zion. The dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Listen. For there the Lord commanded there, the, the blessing. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Even life forevermore. And even life forevermore. So it is in the garden of the sin that God commands his blessing. Do you know that we read from Psalm 24 that there are men that will ascend and they will receive their blessings up there. But there are some places you don't need to ascend. You need to come together. And God will command his blessing in our gathering. There is a blessing that God commands whenever we gather. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why we don't miss. There are many things we cannot do when we are alone. And according to church history, the move of God always began with people that are gathered. In Acts chapter number 2 from verse 1, the Bible said when they were in one accord in our parish, church history said that they were there for 10 days. That was when God came. If Peter said, I am the chiefest of all the apostles, he separated himself said, I will pray with them. That will be the end of his life. They needed to be in one accord if God must come down. In Genesis, the Bible said, this thing that these people have begun to do, no man can stop them. You must could gather the people for an evil intention. Let us build a tower so that we can get name for ourselves. That was being glory. Satan was giving him those ideas. Nevertheless, God said, no man can stop them. Because there is something we build together whenever we are united. And if you don't know, you become weak. The Bible said, iron, sharpened iron. That's why the face of one man will sharpen the other. So you will come and you can be weak. But you just have my knee and your energy in prayer can be boosted. It's just because you came in the company of firemen. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said that he that walked with the wise shall become wise. But he that walked with fools can become what? Huh. Can, shall become what? A fool. These are mysteries that really makes us think. This is where impartation becomes possible. Impartation is not just when I lay hands upon you. As long as you came in that corporate formation, by group or group, there is nothing that you brought that you must leave here with the same thing. As long as you came, there are things that must be altered from your makeup. That is what happened in 1901. The revival started in 1901 after the days of the apostle. And in 1901, there was a theological school in Topekas, in Texas, in USA. Maybe you don't know we are. And what happened is that there were a group of people, the students that were learning theology, they gathered to pray. And as they were praying, they gathered to pray as they were praying, as the apostles were praying in the upper room. History said that the Holy Ghost fell upon one lady. She was called Agnes Osma. That was when the fire broke out. It was when those people gathered that the move of God was initiated. No man can bring the hand of God down. No church can bring the hand of God down. It is when the people of the land gather that God will move. These are the things that we don't know. That's why Satan will fight the unity of the church. He knows that the day that we united, even heaven cannot stop us. The day that we united and we put all our altars together, we can force God down because we have formed the formation that is ever powerful to bring that move of God, God. You know why? Satan will fight you so that you not become one with your destiny helper. Some of us, the day that the destiny helpers come in our life, that is the day that everybody, you get angry with everybody. You just woke up and suddenly you are angry with everything. Has it happened to you before? It's just because by your unity, something different will happen to your life that day. You just woke up and you're angry with your mother. Nothing happened. You were just angry. You didn't speak to her the whole day. You didn't know what would have happened if you spoke to her. 
But whenever says I want to bring this unity, know that there is something at hand. And what is at hand is an inheritance that can only be activated when men dwell together. How pleasant and good for men to dwell together. That is where God commands his blessing. And tonight he will command his blessing. Amen. Tonight he will command his blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's read the last scripture and I'll close. Deuteronomy chapter number. Let's look at four major things that happens when people dwell together. Chapter 33 from verse 1. And this is the blessing. The Bible said, "This is the blessing." Where with Moses, the Where man of God, Moses, the man of God, bless the children of Israel, the children of Israel dead. before his death. And he said, "And he said, the Lord came from the Zion. Lord came. When these people gathered, God was compelled to move from Zion and rose up from Seir unto them. And he them. rose up from Seir." And, uh -huh. and shine from the Mount Paran. And he shine from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousand of saints. And he came with ten thousand of his saints. Listen to what God said. Uh -huh. His right hand went a few love for them. Uh -huh. Yeah, he has loved the people. The Bible said he has loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. So the first thing that ever happened is that Moses was able to decode God. These are deep mysteries. Knowing where God dwells and where he rose from. That is why when we gather, there are decodings that happens. The prophetic becomes hyper whenever we come together. You know the Bible said that in the last days when I pour out my spirit, everybody can prophesy. I hope you know that. They will be able to pick the heartbeat of God and they will decode everything in the mind of the Father. And there is a multiplied effect of that power whenever we dwell together. So these people were gathered, read on. Uh -huh. I don't want to go ahead. Yeah, he has loved the people. The, he has loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. Uh -huh. They sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. They sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law. Moses commanded us a law. Even the inheritances of the house of Jacob. Even the inheritances of the house of Jacob. And he was they king said, in Jeshua. The Bible said he was king in Jeshua. That is Israel. And when the heads of the, the people, heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered, tribe together, were gathered together, let so everything finish. put it there. So everything that was ever happening was because the people had gathered. Those dimensions of God was not possible to be captured by Moses. Those days he was even talking of the Almighty death. Moses went in time and he looked at the thing that will happen even before now. And these things were possible just because these people had gathered. There is a multiply effect of seeing. Your healing grace will multiply when we gather. Hallelujah. Amen. Your faith will be boosted whenever we gather. This is why we come in BLN. This is why you need to keep coming. Because there is a multiply effect of everything that God is doing in your life. That's the first thing that happens whenever people gather. Satan can hide many things. And there will be many things that maybe you'll be praying about that you never receive. But whenever we come in contact with men, that are of God, there is a multiply effect. I speak of the things that have experienced. There are many dimensions of God, and there are things of God that He's doing now that I asked Him I never saw until I came to SCC prayer subcommittee. When we began to pray automatically, God was compelled to move. And when He moved, He saw things. Suddenly, three people received one thing at the same time. But this was the thing that we wanted to look upon whenever we interceded. But these things were not possible when we were alone. It will take a corporate anointing to bring those dimensions of God. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Maybe you have prayed to see, you have not seen. It's just because you need an environment like this. Maybe you have prayed to receive an anointing you have not received. It's just because we must be guarded to compel that move of God. Because whenever the people gather, we can now decode the things of God. Are you here with me? Amen. Whenever the people gather, we can now do what? Yeah. Decode the things of God. Your hearing can become hyper. Your grace can become hyper. The second thing that happens whenever people gather is that there is a revelation of the law and the inheritances of God. That is why he said that Moses commanded us a law and the inheritances of the house of Jacob. You know the Bible said in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 that upon Mount Zion they shall be delivered and they shall be holiness and the people of Jacob shall possess their possession. It is only upon Mount Zion that these things are possible. Mount Zion is the gathering of the sons of God. That's why the Bible said, You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. You have come to the company of the innumerable angels and the assembly of the firstborn. So there is an assembly in Mount Zion. And whenever you appear there, there is a proclamation of the inheritances. There are many things we cannot receive, even when it is our own, when we are alone. There are many things that are commanded. There are blessings of God that are commanded whenever we gather. 
So Moses really guided these people. He gave them the law. The law is what brings us to a level of partnership and reception. Without law, you can't receive from God. Without law, you can't maintain what you have received. The glory of God only comes as a proof of men's obedience. Whenever we obey, that is when the glory of God comes down. And when he comes, he leaves fragments of his glory. These are the things that we call beneficence. He never leaves himself without a witness. If only he came, he will give you a witness. The witnesses that he leaves are blessings. If you continue the Acts chapter 14 verse 17, you know that the Bible said that by the witnesses that he left, he gave us rain, he gave us cross. This is what men call them blessings. They are they call the witnesses of God. And they are not possible sometimes whenever we don't gather. So when we gather, we can move God so that he can bless us abundantly. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Are you here with me? The third thing, for time's sake, are the activations of graces and ordinations whenever we gather. The Bible said he was a king in Jeshurun when the hairs of Israel gathered. So as long as the hairs of Israel have not gathered, he cannot be a king. The ordination of Moses was not, it was not complete as long as the people are not gathered. The only time his anointing gets activated is when these people have been gathered. That is sometimes what happens to us. Whenever we gather together, you don't know there will be an activation. Suddenly, everybody sees who you saw. Everybody is here is who you hear. Has it not happened to you before? That you came to an economy just solely with you. You can't be here and pray. But you don't know what happened. Just because men were praying, you felt like Kai and energy has come. And you began to pray. It's because when men gather, there are activations of ordinations. There are many things that are hidden within you until we meet. Whenever we gather, God finds a way to boost it up. That is the protocol of engagement. May it happen to you tonight. Amen. We just pray five minutes prayer so that we can move the hand of God in our midst. So that there will be activations of ordination. Most of us have received a whole lot of things that are dormant within us. Those things can be done, and Moses was anointed to also become a king in Deshaun. But it was not possible as long as they have not gathered. But the day that they gathered, that one thing came upon his head. And the last thing that happened is that there were rewritings of destinies. When you read on, he said that, let Reuben live and not die, and let his men be many and not few. When Jacob was about to die, he cursed Reuben. In Genesis chapter number 49, he cursed him just because he was able to fornicate with his father's concubine. So Jacob said that you, you are my strength and you are my excellence in power. Nevertheless, unstable as water shall you be because you have defied your father's bed. So that guy was cursed and curse was upon the whole people of Reuben. But when they gathered, Moses said, no, let Reuben live because an anointing has been activated. We rewrote destinies because we gathered. So we can gather together and take your family as a case study. And you begin to push intercession. You don't know what happened. Suddenly, there will be rewritings of destiny. And what was there can be changed. Then we call the church prayer. That is what happened to Peter. In Acts chapter number 12, when you read on, the Bible said that Herod arose and he began to afflict the church. When he killed James and the people were happy, he captured Peter. But the church was wise and they gathered to pray. In Acts chapter number 12, verse 12, the Bible said when Peter came, that is when they knew that the church raised intercession. If the church had not prayed, then one person prayed. Peter was a prayer giant. But his prayer could not deliver him until the church prayed. This is a multiplying effect of power. Hallelujah. This is the place where we have come to. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. When we gather, Satan cannot work within us. When he gather, he cannot hinder things from us. Because there is a multiplying effect whenever the children of God come together. And this is what is going to happen. Can you be on your feet and begin to speak in the language of the spirit if you can? We just pray for five minutes and we will push prayers into your academics. Some of us, you have things in academic that must be treated. There are activations that must happen so that you can pass. You know you are studying, but your studies is as if you are sowing the seed into rocks. There is nothing that is happening. It just because a grace must be activated. Oh my Somebody is not praying. Somebody is not praying. We have five minutes to finish praying.